So now let's look at the case study related to leadership again. So this question takes from the June 2013 question 4. So let's look at the requirements first of all on your next two pages of your uh, question. So required part A is going to analyse Sully's leadership style. Okay, so what do I mean by leadership is a person that will make the employee trust that if they are not going to proceed with the proposal, they will not succeed as a result. So which means, you say something to employees, the employees will trust you and will follow you, and you are the leader. So a leader can also be a manager, which means the manager is responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the business for the implementation bit. And of course, the manager can also be a leader. But of course, leader and manager, they're different because leader is the person who makes the employee trust what the leader has said. But manager, on the other hand, is responsible for the day-to-day -day implementation of your strategies. So, okay, so we're going to analyze the leadership style so we are told before and after the training course. Okay. And also we're going to explain why the change of the leadership style was unsuccessful. So this means 15 markers here, we're going to split that into three aspects. And because what we're going to do is we're going to mainly focus on the theory related to the case. So it's important that you apply your answer to the case and perhaps in this particular circumstance uh, I'm going to write a maximum of 12 points related to part A as my aim. So that means it's the 4 marks per aspect that we have given here. Okay, so we have analysed here. So for part B then, describe the principles of the job enrichment. So job enrichment and the job enlargement will be the examples of the job design. So that means, uh, first of all, when you are recruiting the staff, you're telling the staff what to do. For example, we want to be a finance director. We are looking for a finance director. You want to be a finance director? Okay, no problem. I will tell you the responsibilities in there. For example, describing the job, uh, their responsibilities, etc. And also when you are working within our company as a finance director, I will try to make the job uh, more interesting and making you familiar with the job as well. So that's the reason why I need to conduct the job enlargement, which means we will give you the same tasks to familiarise yourself um, into the operation of our business. And at the same time, we're going to enrich the job. So that means I'm going to give you freedom when making the decisions, for example. So making you feel that the job is quite interesting as a result. So that's the first one. The principles of a job enrichment is making the job more interesting. For example, rotating your role or perhaps giving you the task, giving you the project uh, to be responsible for. And also we're going to evaluate this application in the uh, contract office at the company. So we're given 10 marks for this and perhaps we're going to write approximately 8 points related to it because it's related to description and also evaluation which is the uh, application part. So perhaps that will be 2 marks per point for the evaluation. So that's the uh, mark allocation and the uh, strategy for this question. So, let's read through the question together and doing the case study step by step. I do think that this case study is quite interesting. The industry is in the waste recycling service industry. So, we're told 10 years ago, Sully formed the academic recycling company. It's called ARC. I mean, the name is quite similar to APC. But anyway, though, to offer a specialised waste recycling service to schools and college. Okay, no problem. The company's been very successful and it's expanded rapidly. Okay, so expansion, you know that the ways to expand your business, perhaps the organic growth, strategic alliance or merge and acquisition that we've studied in the business strategy before, yeah? 
and also deciding which industry that you are in. Of course, the recycling service industry, that will be your corporate strategy. To cope with this expansion, Sully has implemented a tight admin process for operating and monitoring contract. So that means the implementation of the processes that we've studied before, of course, that would be the example of the operational strategy. Or you can call it as the implementation strategy if you prefer. To support the activities that we're currently doing, yeah? of course, activities we can use the portals value chains to analyze this. This admin procedure is undertaken by the contract office, okay, who checks the com collections that have been made by the field recycling teams. Okay, no problem. Sully has sole responsibility for obtaining and establishing the recycling contract, but he leaves the day-to-day -day responsibility for ad administering and monitoring the contract to the contract office. Okay, so that means, um, to me, within the organisation structure here, um, Sully's company, ARC, is operating under simple structure, perhaps, because as you, we can see, Sully has centralised all those um, recycling contracts, um, I mean, establishments, by himself. Okay, no problem. And of course, the advantage of the centralization, surely, uh, perhaps if the company is relatively small, uh, the centralization will make sure that the decision will be made quickly. But if the company is very large, but you are using a centralization structure, so the decision will be made quite slowly because there will be lots of hierarchies, or you can call it as the scalar chain in the management theory. Um, so as you can see, so that's the application here. Has closely defined what needs to be done for each contract and how this should be monitored. Okay, so we are told that he has defined that already. So for example, for each contract, needs to be, do, needs to be done, and this needs to be done, and that needs to be done, okay. But have you provided the chaining to the employees? I mean, if the employees are, I mean, you just define what needs to be done, but you haven't told the employee how it can be done. So if you haven't done some of the case studies, for example, during your work to train your employee, perhaps the employee when seeing or facing some of the um, new situations that the employees uh, does not know how to tackle this problem. And then, very, very importantly, if you want to delegate your responsibility to the employees to be responsible for obtaining and establishing a contract later on, you have to make sure that the employee knows how to do that. So, and then, I needed to do this, he said, because workers in this country are naturally lazy and lack initiative. But from my perspective, you are the person within that country as well. Why you are so diligent? Well, you're saying that others are lazy. Why this is the case? This does not hold true. I mean, if you think about this, that's no problem, I should say, if the employees are not the core employees within your company. And of course, this leadership style is the example of the theory X managers leadership style. So we talk about theory X, of course we got the theory Y. So the difference between these two, I mean from the exams perspective, all you have to know about the leadership theory is the theory X and Y and also contingency theory for a leadership. So we'll explain that in seconds, don't worry. Uh, we deliberately take that part into this question. So, theorist ex-manager said, we are cheating the employees as a robot. If they are not doing really well, sack them. We think they are lazy, so we're going to set the tight routines of work to those employees, and that's it, and monitor them closely. Because we think that uh, they are lazy. So that means under the theory X managers leadership style, 
It is the autocratic leadership style. This means the leader or the manager decides what to do and all you have to do is to do it. You don't have any power at all because all of the power is to be centralized in the leader. Okay, so that's the three X uh, manager's uh, perspective. Of course, that's quite suitable in some of the organizations such as this. If the employees within your company are so lazy, you haven't taught them how to do it, so at the start, what we have to do is to get them to listen to you and do the things properly. And also we got the theory why as well. So theory why manager said employees are so clever so that they are the asset to the company, we have to make use of them. So what the theory why manager is going to do is to delegate the responsibility to those employees because they know that employees can do the work really well as well. So, if you change your leadership style later on from the theory X to theory Y, is that possible? But well, that has to be dependent upon quite a lot of these factors, and hence we're going to combine that with the contingency leadership style theory as well. Don't worry, we'll tell you in a second. So, I've found that if you don't tell them exactly what to do and how to do it, they won't get done properly. Well, this is because perhaps they are lazy, or perhaps because you have cultural problems within your organisation, or perhaps you haven't rewarded them to study hard, for example, you haven't allocated the budget into a learning perspective according to the balanced scorecard. Yes, we've looked at it before. Because you haven't motivated the employees to work harder, to study hard, they don't study at all. So each time you give them tasks, you tell them what to do, they get used to it. They just do it. They just follow, ad follow your advice. And that's it. And that's the reason why here the employees are so lazy. Perhaps you've got a question about the leadership style of Sully. Needs to be changed? Okay, so moving on then. Most of the employees working in the contracts office like and respect Sully for his business success and ability to take instant decisions when they refer problem to him. So that means the employees within a company get used to Sully's Theory X manager's leadership style. Okay, you tell me what to do, I just do it and job's done. I won't make any mistakes, you won't blame me uh, because it's all your responsibility. You decide what to do, you make quick decisions. Okay, it's your responsibility. I'm happy about it because I don't have to take that responsibility on my own. So, they're quite happy about the Theory X style. They get used to it, they stop learning, or perhaps they learn quite slowly. Some of the company's employees have complained about the autocratic style of the leadership. But most of the employees have now left the company to work for other organisations. So that means that the employees remaining within that company will be happy about the Theory X leadership style um, that Sully had. So that means they get used to the situation where Sully tells you what to do and you just do it. And that's it. Okay, a few months ago, conscious that he was a self-taught manager, Sully enrolled himself on a week course with a training consultancy which actively advocates and promotes a demographic style of the uh, management. So that means that training company tells Sully, okay, you should stop being a Theory X manager. You need to change your role from the Theory X to Theory Y manager because Theory Y manager uh, is willing to delegate respons responsibility to his staff to do the work. Because if you're acting as the Theory X manager, you're limiting yourself to become a big company or bigger company, I should say. It's simply because you decide what to do, but a person 
I mean, if you work for, for example, eight hours or ten hours, you can't even work 24 hours a day. So perhaps you have to make use of other staff within your organization to make the decision on behalf of you. Okay, so that's what the consultancy company is trying to get at. The course caused Sully to question his previous approach to leadership, which is the theory ex-manager style. It was also the first time for three years that Sully had been out of office during the working hours for a prolonged period of time. However, each night, while he was attending the course, he had to deal with the emails from the contract office listing problems with contract and asking him what actions they should take. So that means the employees get used to the theory X leadership style already. So that whenever they uh, see a new problem coming into the organisation, they just email uh, Sully and get answered. He became exasperated by his employees' inability to take actions to resolve these issues. Okay, so the Sully is very, very angry about this. He discussed this problem with his course tutors. Uh, they suggested that his employees would be more effective and motivated if their jobs were enriched and that they were empowered to make decisions themselves. Okay, so that means the tutors in that training company advised Sully to delegate the responsibility to his staff, allowing the staff to make decisions on their own rather than you make your decision on your own. This means enriching their job, which means making the job more interesting, making them accountable for their jobs. But the question for that is, is that likely that the employees will accept this? I mean, if I were the employee, I would never accept this. It's simply because I get used to the old style. Okay, no problem. I get used to the old style, I get the bonus from you and you make the, uh, make the decision, you take that responsibility rather than I take the responsibility. Okay, I'm happy about it. But now you say to me, okay, please take this responsibility, but you get no reward out of it. So that means I have to make my decision now, but if I make decisions correctly, okay, no bonus is be being given, but if I make the decision wrongly, I'll be punished. Perhaps. So if I were the manager, I would never be willing to accept this. So this means if Sully changed his leadership style from the theory X to theory Y, of course the employees will be upset about this. So moving on then. On his return from the course, Sully called a staff meeting with the contract office where he announced that from now on, employees will have responsibility for taking control actions themselves, rather than referring to the problem to Sully. Okay, so which means after Sully has attended the course, has changed his leadership style from the theory X to the theory Y. That would be a problem. So let's see then. Sully, in turn, was to focus on gaining more contracts and setting them up. Okay, so that seems to me it's the ideal situation. But it's not likely to happen then. However, problems with the new arrangement arose very quickly. Yes, problems arise. Fearful of making mistakes and unsure about what they were doing led to employees discussing issues amongst themselves at length before coming to a tentative decision. So that means when the employees are making decisions, okay, they just discuss with each other for quite a long time because they are afraid of making mistakes. So this will slow down the overall project process. That's the first uh, disadvantage that we had. And also at the same time, we will demotivate the employees because in the past, you make that decision on your own. But now you say to me, I have to make my decision. That seems to be a little bit hard because I'm not quite familiar with the, uh, the jobs I'm currently doing. Okay. The operational recycling teams were particularly critical of the new approach. 
So that team just said to Sally, no, your leadership style, the way that you manage people is not correct. One commented that before, we've got a clear decision very quickly, but now decisions can take several days and appear to lack authority. The new approach also caused tensions and stress within the contract office and absenteeism increased. Okay, so that's not quite suitable for the new leadership style, which, which, which is the theory why manager style. So at the next staff meeting, employees in the contract office asked Sally to return to his old management style, which is the theory X style, and job responsibility. So that means they just do what you've said. We prefer the old Sully, uh, they said, the training course was spoiled, has spoiled you. Okay, reluctantly, Sully agreed to their request. And so all problems again referring up to him. However, he's unhappy with this return to a previous way of working because he's working long hours per day and is concerned about his health. Also, he realizes that he has little time for obtaining and planning a contract and this is severely restricting the capacity of the company to expand. So, this means changing your leadership style from the X to Y is not correct. But from my perspective, a sensible solution for this is to provide the training program for the employees. So grouping the employees together and just doing the, I don't know, the brainstorm process, giving ideas of what sort of problem may arise related to the new contract, and how we're going to solve different types of problems, and also referring that to the internet. And of course, you can engage an expert in that particular field to discuss with others as well. To, for example, to make up a manual uh, brochure, so that the employees can refer to that brochure when they see a new problem coming in before they refer to uh, Sally. Or perhaps uh, we can use the information system, for example, the expert system, to build up the expert system, to build up the knowledge library, so incorporate all of these possibilities, as many as possible, into that system. So whenever uh, the staff will have a particular problem, they can refer to that system before they come to Sully. And of course, Sully doesn't have to work for quite long per day. So that's the reason why in the part A, we're going to analyse the leadership style before and after the training. We know that a change from the theory X to a theory Y style, and why the change is not successful. And part B, we're going to explain how we're going to enrich the job for the employees if we were to use the theory Y management style. So, let's get started then. So, part A. First of all, we're going to talk about the theory X and theory Y manager can be referred to as a case. So, the X manager means he will, he will adopt the autocratic leadership approach or the management approach which means this is an example of the centralization and that leader or that manager has made all of his decisions on his own rather than allowing the employees to make decisions on their own. And the theory why manager we can also talk about is, is using the demographic approach to lead the employees, encouraging the decentralization to delegate the responsibility to different employees to make the decisions on their own. And of course, we can argue that in this case, the X style is more suitable 
than the Y style in this particular case. Okay, uh, because given the employees are getting used to the X style manager uh, before. So, whether or not you adopt the X style or Y style would depend upon different factors. And we refer to this theory, it's called the contingency theory. So the contingency theory said which leadership style that you're adopting would depend upon three factors. We can see that like this. For example, we've got a leader over here. We depend upon the leader. And then the leader will delegate the task. So that would be the second one. Um, and also, uh, we've got the subordinate. It's the third one. The subordinate is uh, the employee that's working below at uh, that particular manager. Okay, so we depend upon these three factors. Okay, so subordinate will be a person's one. So, first of all, the leader contingency. So that means change in approach. is not a reflection of the leadership value but just lose confidence in a subordinate And himself. So that means it is not because they trust your employees that you've uh, thought your employees um, are very, very knowledgeable, they know how to tackle things correctly, so you delegate that responsibility. No, the way that you change leadership style is because that you heard of that to, to say to you, you need to change, so that you change. But that's not correct. Secondly, depending upon the task contingency. So currently, tasks are closely defined and controlled by Sully and decisions. Are made quickly by Sully. So rather than the employees will make the decisions and hence the employees are getting used, uh, ha has got used to the leadership style by Sully by performing as the theory X manager. So if you change leadership style from the X to Y that may not be so, so suitable. And thirdly depending upon the subordinate contingency. So that means the subordinate love the theory X manager style. So that's the reason why, according to the contingency theory, it's not quite suitable for you to change the theory X to the theory Y manager. So that means the authorization to the employee 
is not suitable because first of all they are afraid of going wrong secondly no incentive given for example you haven't given uh, the commission of bonuses to those employees who make that decision on your own and thirdly they might be not familiar with the tasks at all okay so if that's the case then we can do is perhaps you're gonna provide the training to the employee for example in a structured program such as case study or perhaps you simply change the employees if the employees love your theory X management style sack them and employ the new employee who prefer the theory Y management style okay we can make decision on behalf of you but it's more important that you can provide the training to the employees first and also what you can do is gonna redefine the job and also for example uh, redesign your job as well for example in the form of the job enrichment which means you give the same level of tasks to that employee to do in order to familiarize themselves with how to do it so all you need to do also you're going to consider the speed of change so if you decide to change that situation now or dramatically so that will consume you quite lots of resources because if you sat the same place for example you have to pay for a lump sum of the redundancy costs payment to them so perhaps I advise that the company would change that gradually so to teach them how to do that step by step or for example to attend the five day uh, workshop to familiarize themselves with quite lots of his case studies etc so that would be very very important so finally for example we can give the advice as well by developing the core employees like the supervisor who can be dealing with uh, the situations on behalf of Sully so those are the things that I can write in the exam. You can provide different answers to mine. That would be no problem. I can see the answer uh, onto the next page by the ACCA as well. ACCA has got its own answer. So now let's look at the part B together then. So part B is so we're going to describe the principles of job enrichment and apply that to the case. So first of all, we are going to see the principle. So that's related to part B. principles so first of all in order to perform the job enrichment uh, you're going to empower the employees to do the work so for example to be responsible for a project particularly from start to end and also, for example, you're going to rotate the staff as well. So initially, that staff is responsible for that bit. You're going to rotate his job to that bit, uh, for example, every three months. So making sure that the job is quite interesting to them. And of course, you will also have to give them feedback. of 
how to improve the job in the future as well okay so those are the um, ways that we can um, I mean performing the job enrichment and the application here so the job enrichment first of all if you empower the employee in the short term that is not suitable because the employee get used to the theory X manages leadership style so that if you empower the employee in the short term that, that is not quite suitable but of course if you decide to empower the employee to give them power in other words in the long term then this is suitable if First of all, the company provides enough training program and secondly, sets up appropriate reward system in place So, of course, uh, empowering the employees in the long run, of course, is that suitable. Uh, but also you have to consider some of the employees will be reluctant to change, even though you give them bonuses, you give them authority, you give them reward, you give them training. So we can think about to replace parts of the employees who are not willing to change um, with the new coming employees so we're going to replace the existing employees with the new coming employees to do that okay so those are the application uh, that we can uh, do in the exam, and can you see the answers in the back of the note uh, onto the next two pages, as you say? Right, so that's the case study related to leadership style, and hope you're happy with it. Uh, leadership, again, that we just referred to the theory X and Y managers theory, and also the contingency leadership theory. So that will be absolute enough from the exam's perspective. So I hope you enjoy it, and look forward to seeing you in the next of our section together. PC, accounting for your future.